I'm still doing the stealth van building here. I just about finished up on all the drawers. I still want to put a face plate and some handles on them. And I picked up some hinges this morning. I'm going to cut out a section of the top of the bed so that I can uh, lift it up and access the diesel heater when I need to. And someone else pointed out that the fuse for the diesel heater is in the wrong location. It should be up closer to the battery. I got to switch that around as well. But first I, uh, I picked up some paint, so I'm going to paint up the frame of the bed right now. Let's just spill paint everywhere. I was just reaching for my hammer to close the paint can and my clumsy foot kicked it over. Maybe it's a sign I should just paint the entire floor. I also got this set up. Some people were concerned I was going to constrict the airflow to my diesel heater, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. And last summer I was having some problems with my battery getting too hot. So I can also use the air conditioner in the summer to blow cold air on that. So this is going to be a great year round solution for battery care. It's hard to tell how accurate this is going to be because these supports have some play in them. As long as we're within a quarter mile, it's all good. <laughs> Why doesn't this work? Oh, the battery's not in. A quarter kilometer, we're in Canada, I forgot. Success, it turned out really nice. I'm gonna start screwing the bed down now and we'll put the hatch on. It's gonna start looking like I built everything in one day. I need to keep a tally down the bottom corner so you guys know how many days I've spent on it. I'm not gonna show every single night in here, but now that I have the diesel heater, I'm staying nice and warm. Even though this is a huge area compared to my minivan, like at minus 10 Celsius, so I can keep it around 20% power and stay nice and cozy, so it's working great for me. Uh, I'm going to take a slow day today. I'm way overdue on my laundry. i got to get that done. Then I'm going to head over to the foam store and get a mattress ordered, ready to upgrade uh, for my air pad onto something more comfortable. And I'm going to say these drawers are pretty much finished. Uh, i got some magnetic stoppers for them. I'll put that on, and I'll paint them up and put some handles on it, and that'll be that. I want to move on to the electronic system next. I'm just waiting for my lithium battery to arrive and I can start sizing all that up. I'm just going to paint the outside of these. That's what matters, right? As long as the outside is beautiful, the inside doesn't matter. Right, YouTube? Turns out the foam store is closed until after New Year's, so I'll have to keep uh, trucking along with the air pad. So I'm not going to put the passenger seat on a swivel, I'm just going to leave that as is. But I will put some cushions along the back of the bed so it's like a couch. Be plenty of seating arrangements in here but while I'm waiting for stuff to arrive in the mail I'm gonna build some storage behind the passenger seat and then I gotta start thinking about making a privacy curtain across there That's basically that. I just got to put a coat of paint on it and screw it down and that'll be my day. I'd also like to better frame up this floor so that it lines up with the step that's already there. That will be a story for another day though. Why is there somebody with a headlamp inside their van? Should we call the cops or what? Oh no, that's just Foresty Forest. He's painting his shelves. It's alright. I'm not trying to build a luxury showpiece here. 
I just want something functional so I can get back out to the mountains and doing some summits. I do enjoy building stuff though. This is fun. I'm liking this. I want it to look half decent. That's good enough for me. That's all I need in my life. My workspace is becoming such a mess. I've decided that today is going to be an electrical day. I'm going to route the wiring for the DC to DC charger. I've got the 60 amp model, so I'm going a 4 gauge wire. It asks for a 90 amp fuse, but I could only find the 100. I've already got started here by getting myself all dirty and wiring up the fuse. This is going to be right up against the battery. And I also want to run an extension cord along this so I can run shore power in here when I need to. But I'm going to get started and uh, drill a hole in the step here. That's where it's all going to come out. They really skimp on the length of the block heater plug, but I'm going to line up the extension cord with that. That'll meet up with the DC to DC charger cables over here and route it down towards the back from there. So, now for the fun part, split loom. So my diesel heater is now fused in the correct location and the wiring for my DC to DC charger is pretty much ready to go. I'm not going to hook those on right now. There's no need to have live wires hanging around inside the van. And whenever I need shore power, I just have to plug in up here. Baby wipes, not just for scrubbing your meat. This is how this shelf is going to be mounted and the wires are running along there. They'll pop out over here to my DC to DC charger, the battery, my inverter, and the fuse panel. This is a Blue Sea Systems fuse panel. It's got all the positive and negative terminals built in. Should be an easy and uh, organized way to do things. Okay, so I got the windows tinted this morning. They put a 20% film over the factory tint and it's pretty dark. I think it should be stealthy in the city during the daytime. But at night, I don't think it'll be enough to block out the interior lights. I could have went for a limo tint, but then uh, it could have been too dark and it would have defeated the point of having windows in the first place. It just confirms that I'm going to have to make some curtains. I'll probably use like a thick insulated material that rolls down and snaps on. And I just got notification that my lithium battery arrived, so I'm going to go pick that up so I can finally start piecing together my electrical system. It's just not going to be fully functioning until I get my uh, high output alternator installed which may not arrive for another couple weeks. Canada Post is being kind of strange. The battery's still on their truck somewhere, so I'll work on this in the meantime. Uh, I gotta put a piece of plywood across here. I'll have to unscrew this box and uh, slide it underneath. Then I'll cut out a section here so the wires can come out. I just found the dimensions for a 15 liter tank, so I'm gonna nudge this in a bit further than before in case I ever wanna to upgrade to the bigger one. All right, this is awesome. I finally got a big piece of the puzzle here. This is a lithium battery made by Linac. They're a Canadian company based out of Thunder Bay. I had the same brand of battery in my minivan that I bought over a year ago and we just kind of kept in contact and uh, Connor offered to donate a new lithium battery to my new van build. So thanks so much. Uh, I can't wait to try this thing out. So this is their 200 amp hour True Series model and I love the fact that there's that much capacity packed into a single 12 volt unit. There's actually 240 amp hour in here, but 200 amp hour is what you can safely use. 
and it's all protected by the BMS with a low voltage cutoff as well as a low temperature cutoff which is really important to have when you're living in cold climates like this. But the specs on this are really good too. It'll do a 200 amp continuous discharge so I'll be able to run my 2000 watt pure sign inverter to its full capacity. It just opens the door to all kinds of new possibilities of what I can run in here. But thanks again Linac. I can't wait to put this thing to the test. Alright, I'm going to get to work putting this together now, but I'll save that for the next video. The van is just uh, slowly starting to come together. It's beginning to feel like my home, one step at a time. But thanks for watching. Thank you to Patreon supporters. Happy New Year's, and I'll see you in the next video.